Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how you can obtain a copy of Andrew Hayes Omega macro and also how to use it to estimate composite reliability for a multi-item scale measuring a single latent construct. Um, basically the um, the reliability measure that we are going to compute using the macro is McDonald's Omega. Now you might be asking yourself why do we need McDonald's Omega when we already have Cronbox Alpha and the simple answer is that the measurement model uh, that Cronbox Alpha assumes is oftentimes not tenable in applied research. Uh, specifically Cronbox Alpha makes the assumption that your indicators are essentially tau equivalent. And what that means is that the relationship between an indicator and the latent variable that's being measured uh, is assumed to be constant across the indicator variables. So if you think in factor analytic terms, what that would translate into is equivalence in terms of factor loadings across the indicator variables. And in those cases where essential tau equivalence is not met and you utilize Cronbox Alpha, you can end up underestimating the reliability for your measure. So McDonald's Omega uh, does not make the assumption of essential tau equivalence and so it can be use useful when you have uh, a set of congeneric indicators associated with your scale. And what it will do for you is to produce a more uh, accurate estimate of reliability in those cases. In those circumstances where uh, your, your indicators are essentially tau equivalent, then McDonald's Omega will yield a reliability estimate that is comparable to Cronbox Alpha. So you can see from that standpoint that McDonald's Omega is actually a more general procedure and would fit uh, more situations uh, than Cronbox Alpha. So let's go to Andrew Hayes' website and download a copy of the macro and then we will install it to SPSS and then from there I'll show you uh, how to use it. So this is his website and uh, this is the link up here and what I'll do is include that link uh, underneath the video description. So if you scroll down you'll see that we have a uh, section uh, designated as Omega and you'll see that uh, there's actually an article where this um, macro is discussed and also how to compute um, McDonald's Omega using structural equation modeling. So uh, if you look below though it's got an Omega.zip uh, so it's a zip file that's containing the macro and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to download this zip and then uh, open up the macro or basically uh, set it up to where we can install it to SPSS. So I'm going to click on this and it's going to download to my downloads folder and here it is right here and I'm going to uh, click on it or double click on it and you can see there's various files in here. So uh, the blurt 8 is a data file uh, that's used uh, throughout an example that's provided in uh, this article right here. This is Hayes and Kautz and Press article uh, on McDonald's Omega and um, the, the article is actually already out um, but uh, they, they did provide this for us and so we're, we'll, we will reference this a couple of times uh, in this presentation. Uh, then down below you can see uh, we have Omega and so we're going to use this uh, file uh, and install it uh, so that we can use the macro in SPSS. So what I need to do is to get this out of the zip folder so I'm going to uh, copy this and go back under uh, downloads here and I'm going to paste it in and so when I start requesting uh, this file right here I'm just gonna all I have to do is go through when I have SPSS open I can go through uh, SPSS and go into my down, downloads folder and extract this so let's open up SPSS so here it is and I've actually already installed the macro but I'll show you where it's located uh, if we go to analyze we'll go down to scale and you can see right here this is where uh, we would use uh, the macro. Down below you can see reliability analysis. This is where we would uh, typically go if we were computing Cronbox Alpha. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll kind of walk you through the steps of installing it at this point. So we'll go to extensions, utilities, and then we'll go down to install custom dialog. So I'll click on that and I'll click on the Omega uh, file that I had uh, pulled out of the zip file and pasted it into my downloads folder 
and uh, from there we'll click on open and you can see it says there's already a dialog by this name installed do you want to override it I'll just go ahead and click on OK um, and now it just says dialog files are installed to and you can see where we would find um, the uh, the macro uh, basically just again going to analyze and scale and then to Omega so we'll click on OK so now let's uh, utilize the data that was provided in uh, the zip file and walk through an example and you'll notice that we have um, blurt 1, blurt 2, R, blurt 3, R, blurt 4, 5, R, 6, 7, R, and 8. And so basically um, each of these variables reflects um, individuals responses to an item from a blurtaciousness scale. So that was actually a new uh, concept for me um, and if you go into um, if you go into the um, the zip file and, and uh, open up that uh, impress document at the bottom or at the end of it you'll see uh, this table right here so let's just take a quick look at the item so you get a sense of what people are responding to and so individuals responded uh, to each of those items on a scale from one to five one being strongly disagree and five being strongly agree to the following items so the first one is if I have something to say I don't hesitate to say it and so that's the blurt one item in the data set so obviously a person uh, who uh, indicated a one is strongly disagreeing a person indicating a five is strongly uh, agreeing then we have uh, it often takes me a while to figure out how to express myself and so you can see that the sentiment reflected in that statement is the uh, opposite theoretically the exact opposite of the sentiment reflected in this statement so you can see that this item right here would be considered positively worded this item right here would be considered negatively worded and so if a person indicated strong agreement to the second item then we would also expect that person to exp to indicate strong disagreement to this item right here so the reason why you we have this uh, blurt to R, the R is reflecting the fact that this item has been recoded um, so that uh, a higher value on this is reflecting greater blurtaciousness um, as opposed to lower blurtaciousness. So um, at any rate, so this is uh, one, uh, the first of the reverse coded items in the scale. Then we have if I disagree with someone, I tend to wait until later to say something. That is the blurt 3R. Uh, item right there so that's again a negatively worded state statement uh, which is again worded in the opposite direction as this one right here and so the authors uh, decided to reverse code that particular item so so that's the blurt 3R then we have a positively worded item I always say what's on my mind that's blurt 4 sometimes I just don't know what uh, to say to people that's blurt 5R I never have a problem saying what I think that's blurt 6 uh, when emotions are involved, it's difficult for me to argue my opinion. That's blurt 7R. And then uh, I speak my mind as soon as the thought enters my head. That's blurt 8. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go into SPSS and uh, run our analysis to generate um, McDonald's Omega. So here we are and uh, back in SPSS and I'm going to go down to analyze, go to scale and then uh, click on Omega, Alpha and all subsets reliability procedure right there and this box is going to come up. So I'm going to move uh, the, the, um, the items over into the items box, so all of these and you'll notice that in terms of the reliability measure there are uh, three options so um, I'll show you first off we have McDonald's Omega and you'll see that it's got a little ML next to it and basically the way McDonald's Omega is calculated um, is you is um, utilizing uh, factor analysis maximum likelihood factor analysis in order to generate a set of factor loadings those factor loadings are, are utilized in the computation as well as the uniquenesses associated with the items so that's why the ML is there there's also another McDonald's Omega this is a, a different approach uh, and then we have Chromebox Alpha if you wanted that you could click on that so you have those three options that are available to you so I'm going to go ahead and click leave McDonald's Omega ML uh, clicked on and then we'll click on OK 
Okay, so now you can see in our output, first off, we have a factor analysis uh, that's presented. So you can see that basically what this was was a uh, maximum likelihood factor analysis where a single factor was forced. So you can see right here in, in our, um, in our uh, total variance explained, our, basically our uh, table right here, uh, this is the eigenvalue for that factor that was forced. There's the percentage of variance accounted for. You can see um, above, you know, we have our communality estimates um, for our items. And then you can see down below we have our factor matrix. And this matrix is just containing the correlations between each of the uh, indicator variables and the latent factor. As we scroll down a little bit further, you can see that we get our um, our reliability estimate. This is McDonald's Omega right here, which is 0.785. And then down below, we also have item information. So you can see we have the means, the standard deviations. And then we have this column of loadings. And these are unstandardized factor loadings. And then this column of error variances right here. These are basically the uniquenesses associated with the items um, from our uh, maximum likelihood factor analysis. Now briefly, let me just show you how it's computed um, based on those unstandardized factor loadings and the uniquenesses. So if you look uh, back in um, the Impress article, you'll see the computation for uh, McDonald's Omega. You'll see right here that we have in the numerator of the formula, it's got a sigma followed by a lambda and then uh, outside the parenthesis is a square. Um, and basically the lambdas are the unstandardized factor loading. So sigma uh, followed by the lambda is basically saying sum up uh, the unstandardized factor loadings and then we're going to square uh, that sum. And that same value is found in this portion of the denominator right here. Uh, then plus and then you can see right here it says basically sum up the, uh, the uh, measurement error variances. So that's what this is right here. So just to kind of show you what I'm talking about, uh, if I take those values from our output and put them into Excel file, this is uh, just a little something I've created. And I'll include a link underneath the video uh, description so you can have this if you want. Uh, we have the unstandardized uh, factor loadings uh, from our output as well as the measurement errors or the uniquenesses. And so in terms of the numerator, what we need is that, um, that squared sum of the factor loading. So you can see right here uh, where it says sum right here. This is just where I've summed these values up. And then uh, the next value is where I've squared them. And then uh, what I've done over here is I've summed up uh, the uh, measurement errors. So that's this sum right here. So the omega, or McDonald's omega, basically involves taking uh, this number right here and dividing it by the sum of this number and this number right here. And so there, there you go. And so that's where we get the 0.785 that we have um, in our output. Now one other thing that I want to mention, and this goes back to those negatively worded items where they have been reverse coded. If those items have not been reverse coded, this and I include those in our analysis, it's going to create some problems in terms of our reliability estimate. So again, if you have a scale where you have items, there are, some of the items are worded in uh, sort of a pro-trait uh, direction and others are worded in sort of the contrate direction, you'll need to reverse code those items before you start incorporating them in your reliability analysis. Otherwise, you're going to end up with uh, potentially nonsensical results. So just to demonstrate what I'm talking about, uh, what I did was I took that original file and created uh, basically just kind of re-reverse coded those uh, reverse coded items back into their original variables. And what I thought I would do is run the analysis with these items included instead of the reverse coded. So if I go to analyze, scale, go back in here, I'm going to take out the 2R, the 3R, uh, the 5R, and the 7R right here, and I'll include the original 2 through 7 uh, items right there. And so now when I click on OK, you'll notice that I end up with a reliability value or a reliability estimate of 0 0.013. So that's a that's a pretty much a nonsensical result. Um, 
and uh, that this would be the same problem that you would have if you ran the analysis using uh, Cronbox Alpha. So it's going to be really important in those cases where you have, again, uh, uh, items in your scale that are worded in different directions to make sure that you've recoded those items appropriately. Otherwise, you can end up with these nonsensical results. Uh, in those cases where you only have uh, items worded in one direction, that's not going to be a concern. Okay, so that, uh, that covers everything I wanted to talk about in this video, and I appreciate you watching.